In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve three term quadratic equations by factorization when the leading coefficient is plus or minus one. Let's start off with an example. We want to solve this equation x squared plus three x plus two equals zero. Now, the way we're used to solving these kinds of equations is by factoring out an x or moving it to one side, but in this case, there's a constant two that's going to prevent either of those methods from working. So what do we do here? Well, what we do here is we factorize this left-hand side of the equation. So that means we want to factorize this expression into x plus some number, and then another factor, x plus some other number. And we want that to be exactly equivalent to this left-hand side of the expression as it is. That way, when we say that these two factors multiplied together equal zero, we can use the zero product property and set each of these factors equal to zero to get a solution. But right now, our task is just to factorize this left-hand side expression into these two factors. We need to fill in the blanks here. What do we fill in the blanks with? Well, remember there are two conditions on the blanks. The blanks, must, first of all, they must multiply to the constant here. They must multiply to two. So they must multiply to two. And second of all, they must add to three here, because each one is multiplying an x, and those get added to form that three x. So the blanks must add to three. So we need to figure out two numbers that multiply to two and add to three. What are they? Well, the only factors of two are one and two, and these two factors add to three, so that's good. The blanks must be one and two then. So x plus one and x plus two equals zero. So now we've factorized this left-hand side and we can use the zero product property according to the zero product property since these two factors multiply to zero, we can conclude that one of those two factors must be zero. So we've got two possibilities. First is that x plus one equals zero, and then, or there's another possibility. The other possibility is that the second factor is equal to zero, maybe x plus two equals zero. So if either of these uh, conditions are satisfied, then we get a solution to the equation. So we really just need to solve these two equations independently. x plus one equals zero, that, that concludes with x equals negative one, and then, or x plus two equals zero, that concludes with x equals negative two. So there we go, there is our solution to the quadratic equation, x equals negative one, or x equals negative two. Okay, so here's another problem. This time we want to solve the equation negative x squared plus four x minus three equals zero. Again, we're going to want to use factorization here, and previously we factored that left-hand side expression into the product of x plus some number times x plus another number. But there's one issue here, and that is that negative in front of the x squared. These factors can't possibly multiply to form this quadratic expression because x times x makes positive x squared, not negative x squared. So right now we're at a bit of a barrier. How do we get this equation into a form that can be factored into this product of factors? Well, really, we just want to take off that negative in front of the x squared. And what is a valid way to do that? Well, we can just multiply both sides of the equation by negative one. So that's what we'll do first. Multiply by negative one. So we'll just multiply everything by negative one. That'll just flip the sign of everything. So this x negative x squared becomes positive x squared, then minus four x, then plus three is equal to zero. And now we have a positive x squared, so that'll match up with x times x. And now we just need to factorize this left-hand side here. All right, so let's go ahead and proceed with the factorization here. So these two blanks here, the blanks must satisfy two conditions. The first of which is that they must multiply to that constant there. They must multiply to three. And the second condition is that they have to add to that x coefficient negative four. They have to add to that 
to negative 4. So what pair of numbers multiplies to 3 but adds to negative 4? Well, the only factors of 3 are 1 and 3, um, but we want those to add to negative 4, not positive 4, and we can make those factors negative. Negative 1 times negative 3 makes 3, and negative 1 plus negative 3 makes negative 4. So that's good. We'll just have the blanks be negative 1 and negative 3. And now according to the zero product property, we have two possibilities for the solution. First of all, we could have x uh, plus negative 1 is equal to 0. Second of all, we could have x plus negative 3 equal to 0. If either of those conditions is satisfied, then we have a solution to the equation. So let's just go ahead and simplify this. This is x minus 1 equals 0, and the other one is x minus 3 equals 0. And we'll just go ahead and solve this. So x equals 1, or we could have x equals Three. And there we go. Those are the two solutions to the quadratic equation. All right, here's a final example. So we want to solve the equation x squared plus x plus 10 is equal to 6 minus 3x. And how we've been doing this solving of the equations is by factorizing the left-hand side. But let's think about this a little bit before we jump into factorizing. The whole point of factorizing is so that we can use the zero product property and set each factor equal to zero. But if we factorize the left hand side as is, we're not going to be able to use that zero product property because the right hand side isn't equal to zero yet. So the first thing that we should do before we even think about factorizing this equation is we should get the right hand side to equal zero. And to do that we need to cancel out that 6 and the minus 3x from the right hand side. So we really need to subtract 6 that will cancel out the 6 and then add 3x, cancel out the minus 3x. And we do that on both sides, so minus 6 here and plus 3x here. And then the result of that is we get x squared plus 4x plus 4 is equal to 0. Okay, great. So this is better. Now we have a quadratic expression equal to 0. We can factorize this quadratic expression, use the zero product property, and we'll be all good. So let's go ahead and factorize this. So we need, we need x plus something, and then another x plus something is equal to 0. What are the somethings? Well, remember they have to multiply to the constants, they have to multiply to 4, and they have to add to the x coefficient, so add to 4. Um, so we really need to find two numbers that multiply to 4 and add to 4. And that's pretty straightforward, it's just 2 and 2. 2 times 2 is 4, 2 plus 2 is 4. So x plus 2, x plus 2. So using that zero product property, we can say that either x plus 2 equals 0, or x plus 2 equals 0. This factor equals 0, that factor equals 0. They're really just the same factor, so we'll get the same solution. x equals negative 2, or x equals negative 2, which really means there's only one solution to this quadratic equation, and it is x equals negative 2. Great, so now we know how to solve quadratic equations by factoring when the leading coefficient is positive or negative 1. And in the future, we'll also learn how to deal with quadratic equations when the leading coefficient is not positive or negative 1.